Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Britannia Industries Limited Q1 FY24 Earnings Conference Call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the lesson only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during this conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Mayank Mundra from Investor Relations team. Thank you and over to you, Mr. Mundra. Thanks, Neera. Uh, hello, everyone. This is Mayank from the Investor Relations team. I welcome you all to the Britannia earnings call to discuss the financial results of Q1 2324. Joining us today on this earnings call is our Vice Chairman and Managing Director, Mr. Varun Berry, Executive Director and CEO, Mr. Rajneep Kohli, Executive Director and CFO, Mr. N. Venkat Raman, Chief Commercial Officer, Sales and Replenishment, Mr. Bipin Kataria, Chief Marketing Officer, Mr. Amit Doshi, and Chief Procurement Officer, Mr. Manoj Balji. The analyst deck is uploaded on our website. Uh, before I pass it on to Mr. Warrenberry, I would like to draw your attention to the safe harbor statement in the presentation. Over to Mr. Warrenberry with remarks on the performance. Good morning, everyone. Uh, so let's let's jump to the deck. Uh, so page three of the deck. So this gives uh, the parameters for the quarter. So uh, our revenue growth for nine percent, are uh, which which actually incorporated a transaction growth of nine percent as well. Uh, operating profits uh, grew by thirty seven percent, and our market share was uh, stable. However, uh, the you know the gap with the second largest competitor became much larger this quarter. Um, moving on uh, to our strategic pillars, uh, you've seen these so distribution marketing, uh, innovation, adjacent businesses to contribute uh, more as we go forward, cost efficiency programs which we've been running for uh, quite some years now, and uh, sustainability which uh, together will drive uh, profitable growth for the company. Moving on to slide number five. So uh, if you were to look at our distribution, uh, we are now at about 26.7 lakh outlets total. Um, our focus states growth has been uh, much higher than our growths for rest of India. So focus states have continued to grow at a a faster clip, which is 2.2 times what we've grown in the rest of India. Uh, our rural distribution continues to move up. We are uh, at 28,000 uh, rural distributors now, um, and we, uh, you know, as we speak, we are scaling this up even further. Uh, slide number six: uh, key marketing activities. So we focused on uh, Mari uh, milk bikis. Uh, Pure Magic, 50-50, uh, uh, Croissant, uh, Winking Cow, uh, and we've also started the Mari My Startup uh, Season 4. Uh, the rewards and recognition programs, uh, you know, that, that we participated in, we were chosen the FMCG brand uh, out of home by Kantar, uh, and uh, our marketing team uh, got the Marketing Team of the Year Award, the ET Sharks Award for 2023. Uh, so proud moments uh, for us. Uh, we, we've run some consumer promotions, which are a mix of uh, items as well as uh, grammage in pack. The grammage in packs have been more to uh, make sure that we remain competitive. Uh, as inflation has receded, um, you know, it's uh, other pe uh, the, the local competitors have started to uh, bring in more grams in bag, so we may, we are making sure that we remain competitive with that. Uh, innovation, uh, we've had a, a, a very interesting product launch in Jim Jam Pops, uh, and uh, we've got some very interesting advertising as well behind it. Uh, we've, we've also launched the multi-grain rusk, which has been launched in West and South only uh, for the time being. We've also scaled up 50-50 Golmar, which is uh, doing extremely well for us. 
Uh, we've also had a robust season for Winking Cow uh, with a wide range of offerings. So uh, we obviously have, uh, you know, transitioned to the PET bottles, which are doing really well. These are aseptic PET bottles, uh, and the line is in Ranjan Gao. Uh, it's an expensive line, but it's eco-friendly because you use less plastic, as well as uh, the quality of the product because you're not, you know, uh, uh, subjecting it to very high heat is a lot better. It's not burnt. It's it's uh, it's product which is much better than a heat-treated uh, product. And we've also launched rich milkshakes uh, and coconut water this season. And uh, we've had very high double-digit growths as far as drinks is concerned. And uh, our innovation contribution has been uh, greater than 10%. So uh, moving on, uh, our adjacent uh, businesses are also on reasonably strong footing. I wouldn't say uh, absolutely strong footing. Uh, cake. Uh, we have been scaling up our innovations. Uh, we've, we've launched the big Swiss roll. We've also done cupcakes. Uh, and sequentially, we've moved up on cakes. But uh, post-COVID, uh, this is one category which seems to be still coming it into its own. But we've seen green shoots uh, this quarter, and we are absolutely confident that cake is uh, moving in the right direction. Rusk again, uh, we've strengthened our portfolio with regional core flavors like butter rusk, which is uh, East dominated uh, uh, product. Uh, and uh, our local competitor had a, a large play in that. Uh, we've just launched that. We've also scaled up milk rusk in Kerala. Um, and bread, we continue to grow profitably uh, as far as this product is concerned. Uh, on Rusk, we, uh, again, uh, you know, it's been a, a lot of local competition. There are about 2,500 local competitors all over the place, uh, more so in the north. And we have made sure that this quarter we became competitive. Uh, you know, obviously we can't match the local competitors, but we became a lot more competitive than we were. And we are confident that as we move forward, even in this category, we will gain muscle. Uh, you, 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 you know that we, this category contributes uh, a reasonable amount of top line as well as uh, good prof uh, profitability as well to us. Uh, so we are uh, making sure that we become competitive and we deal with each region in a different way. Uh, south, uh, east, and west are different. North is different, and that's how we are making sure that we uh, deal with this category. Uh, international has been a good story. Uh, Middle East and Africa has been growing in high double digits with uh, much improved margins. Uh, we've seen uh, a double digit profitable growth in the rest of international as well, uh, led by uh, the Americas. Um, we've, uh, Nepal continues to be a very good story with a high double digit growth and expanded margins. Uh, we've started uh, business in Egypt, uh, where it's doing extremely well. Uh, and Kenya is, uh, we've started, a, we've got a joint venture there. Uh, we've had a little bit of starting trouble with some forex issues there, but uh, we are very confident that uh, even the Kenya business will uh, come uh, in line as we move forward. So international has been a decent story for us with uh, very good growths. Uh, dairy, as I spoke about, uh, the winking cow products are doing very well. Uh, we've taken, uh, you know, the change of identity as far as cheese is concerned. Britannia, the laughing cow, is now, uh, you know, uh, uh, moving forward, uh, going to be a very big driver for growth. And uh, we've launched the laughing cow portions, which is that round box that you see in the center, uh, and it's doing really well. Uh, and uh, we are starting to launch our 10 rupee sachets of cheese as well. And we hope to see a very, very good uh, growth as far as dairy is concerned. Supply of SMP, which is, uh, you know, our milk powder uh, and our uh, sweetened condensed milk and butter for captive consumption has started from, uh, from our factory uh, to our bakery division. Uh, and that's going uh, well. 
Uh, moving on to the next slide, which is slide nine. Uh, cost efficiencies across verticals have been moving well. Uh, as you know, the themes have been, uh, you know, uh, 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 you know, uh, fuel consumption, renewable energy, uh, market damages uh, that we receive back from the market, distance traveled, truck utilization, and line throughputs. Uh, and we've been making good progress in each one of these. And our target for 23-24 is seven times what it was in 13-14. So we are stepping up uh, this cost reduction program every year, and uh, we've been able to do so. And you've got to remember again, once again, that uh, this is not anything which is carried over from the last year. The meter starts on the first day of the year and ends on the last day of the year, as far as this is concerned. Uh, moving on to slide number 10, um, we've, we've set up uh, some really good factories, uh, and uh, this year we've, we've scaled up Barabanki, uh, which is in UP. Uh, so we scaled it up in Q1 of 23-24. We've got uh, five lines running there, and uh, that's a factory which is, uh, you know, starting to perform uh, at efficiency currently. Uh, similarly, Tirnal Valley, uh, which is in Tamil Nadu, uh, both of these factories, uh, we are grateful to the UP government as well as the Tamil Nadu government for the incentives that it's provided for us. And this is giving us capacity in the right place and helping us uh, improve our freshness to market as well. Uh, moving on to uh, ESG. Now, on ESG, uh, we continue to follow our programs on people, uh, resources, governance, and growth. Uh, some of these are outlined here. Um, just to let you know, we uh, won the award by the business world uh, of being in the top 30 uh, most sustainable companies in 2023. We are very proud of that. Uh, we've also uh, been shortlisted for the World Sustainability Awards for 2023. Uh, some of the achievements in this area have been 100% plastic neutrality. Uh, we have moved uh, our Dow Jones score uh, to 53rd, which is third amongst the FMCG peers in India. Uh, our sugar and sodium has been reduced by 2% and uh, eight, almost 8% 8 respectively. And we've been recognized, as I said, as uh, one of the top 30 India's most sustainable companies. So uh, very proud of this. And we are making sure that we take this uh, agenda to the next level uh, in this year. Uh, moving on to, um, you know, our uh, malnutrition reduction programs. We've extended this to two new centers. And... Uh, we have, uh, you know, we've, we've made sure that, you know, we've, we've, uh, we've also helped refurbish the, the uh, Bai Jerbai uh, Wadia Hospital, which is a part of the Naroji Wadia Maternity Hospital. And uh, we now have 4,70,000 patients which are being treated uh, in this hospital. We've also got, uh, you know, uh, 37 lakh patients who've been treated in the last 10 years with 925 uh, beds uh, dedicated to these patients. Uh, we've also got other CSR initiatives which have been extended to 131 new villages. Um, we've got, uh, you know, the Nutrition Foundation helping with uh, you know, we've gone to uh, additional 625 schools. Uh, we've gone to almost 700 new Anganwadi centers. And we've got now uh, 2,50,000 uh, beneficiaries of this program. So uh, good progress there as well. So um, now moving on to uh, slide number 14, which is a, a view on what's happening on the commodity costs. Uh, on the commodity side, uh, flour has been, uh, you know, there has been uh, inflation as far as flour is concerned. Uh, so if you look at versus last year, there's been an inflation of about 3%. Now, uh, 
these are numbers for us uh, obviously the numbers because we were covered last year uh, our inflation uh, or uh, you know uh, we, last year's uh, numbers for us were much better than the industry uh, so uh, you know other companies probably uh, have seen uh, a flattish uh, uh, story as far as flour is concerned uh, palm oil uh, has been a, a huge deflation uh, we've seen a deflation of almost 21% on sugar there's been a slight inflation of 1% uh, and versus last quarter it's been an inflation of 2% on laminates again there's been a deflation versus last year of 18% and versus last quarter of 3% and similarly on corrugated boxes uh, so basically slight inflation on flour and sugar and deflation on the other uh, commodities that we buy. So uh, moving on to slide number 15, uh, on the cost and profitability front, uh, front uh, we've initiated price, pricing actions to stay competitive and drive market share. Now, uh, as I was saying on the last slide, uh, some, some of the companies had not covered uh, as well as we did last year. So their commodity prices were much higher than us last year. So they have seen uh, a deflation, which is much larger than uh, what we've seen this year. And as a result of that, there have been quite a few price corrections which have happened in the market. Uh, being the market leaders, uh, also we had taken the uh, first mover advantage on uh, all price increases because we wanted to make sure that uh, all inflation was covered. Uh, so uh, there were there were lots of uh, corrections which had to be made because in certain cases uh, some some large competitors had taken pricing downsides. And in certain cases uh, they had not followed us on the price increase. So on a case to case basis, we've looked at what needs to be done to make sure that we remain competitive. We've also increased our advertising and sales promotion to uh, support our brands and drive innovation. Uh, we've uh, obviously doubled down on our cost efficiency programs across all functions to make sure that we remain extremely competitive and we remain the lowest cost operators in our categories. Uh, so on an outlook basis, we, we are very vigilant on uh, competitive pricing actions. Uh, we are also closely monitoring uh, stock price situation of commodities. And finally, uh, we are uh, employing the necessary pricing strategies, which would be deployed to remain competitive and drive market share, uh, as well as uh, drive uh, profitable growth in the future. So as a result of that, uh, our uh, Numbers for uh, the quarter um, are, have been very uh, healthy. Uh, we've, uh, if you go to slide number 17, um, we, we've had uh, on the top line, we've had a 12-month growth of 9% and a 24-month growth of 18%. Um, and if you go to the next slide, our uh, operating profit has grown uh, in the 12 months at 37% and in the 24 months at 22%. So uh, fairly healthy uh, and robust uh, growths on both top line as well as bottom line. Uh, moving on to slide 19, uh, this gives uh, our uh, certain parameters on, so I've already spoken about the top, uh, 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 you know, the top uh, table. So net sales, 9% uh, and 18% operating profit, 37% 12 months, 22% 24 months, profit before tax, 34% uh, 12 months and 17% in 24 months, and PBT again similarly 36% and 17%. If you were to look at uh, some of our ratios, uh, profit from operations still a very healthy 15.6%. Profit before tax is at 15.7% and profit after tax uh, remains at a very healthy 11.5%. Um, so that's where it is. Uh, the, 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 you know, obviously some uh, factors, there were some profits which were 
uh, booked last year, so we are cycling a certain uh, profitability uh, which uh, was taken for a larger period. Uh, and we will take that in our questions as we, uh, I'm sure you'll have questions on that. So that's all from me. Uh, let's open the house for questions. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Participants, you may press star and one to ask the question. The first question is from the line of Abnish Roy from Nuwama Institutional Equities. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks. I've got uh, three questions. So my first question is on the volume growth, which was uh, flattish. So uh, could you elaborate what exactly you have done in terms of several pricing initiatives? And in case you have passed on grammage back to customer, uh, when do you see the volume trajectory benefiting because of that? Because if you have passed on grammage, why is the volume still flattish? And related question to this is when I see the market share data which you have given, Number two player has lost a significant market share, but that benefit does not seem to have come to us. You have also lost, I think, a bit market share. So is this data credible? And if it is credible, who has gained the market share? Uh, yes, so Avnish, uh, that was like uh, being in a firing squad with uh, many questions coming my way. So, <laughs> so uh, let me just understand. Your first question was on uh, volume growth, was that? Yes. Yeah. So, uh, Avnish, the, the fact is that we've not uh, equated prices everywhere. Uh, we have taken, uh, you know, a, a very uh, cold call on what is necessary and what is not. Uh, second is that uh, the markets are a little sluggish uh, compared to what we've seen in the past. Uh, what we've seen this quarter, and uh, I'm not sure, I think I've heard the same commentary from other FMCG companies as well. Uh, there have been, uh, there has been sluggishness in the rural markets, even for us. While we've been growing faster than the market in rural, uh, the sluggishness is, is definitely there. Um, the, uh, and even, even the urban markets, while, uh, you know, modern trade has been robust, uh, and so has e-com. Uh, the, the, the traditional trade markets, both in rural and urban, have been a little more sluggish than what we've seen in the past. Uh, but it, these are all passing phases. You know, we've, what we've seen in the past as well is that we tend to get uh, overly worried about uh, a quarter which is uh, a little slow on the uh, on the uh, on a certain channel growth. But, uh, you know, it, it, it sort of uh, eases out and we are seeing, uh, I would say, uh, slight signs of that happening, although it will take a little bit of time for the growths to pick up. Uh, you are right about market share. Uh, we have been flattish uh, in, and the reason for uh, the, the gainers uh, of market share have been all local players. So the local players, uh, because of the pricing actions that they're taking in their small vicinities uh, have gained uh, a little bit of market share. And uh, that's, that's a phenomena that we've seen in the past as well. Uh, when the, uh, you know, inflation is high, local players just walk away. Uh, and when uh, things start to become a little more normalized, uh, local players come into the market and start to operate uh, large schemes uh, for customers as well as consumers. So that's what we are uh, looking at currently. Uh, it's a matter of uh, one or two months, and, uh, you know, we are very confident that with uh, all the actions that we've taken, and most of the actions have been back-ended uh, in the first quarter, we are, we are very confident that we will be back uh, and uh, we will get back onto our trajectory. So, uh, does that answer your question, Abneesh? Did I miss out anything from your firing squad? 
uh, only one thing. So, in terms yeah. of pricing, it's largely price cuts in uh, select SKUs, or is there grammage addition also with that? No, so uh, we it's it's basically grammage additions that we've done uh, in certain cases, and in certain cases we are looking at doing some article promotions and. Uh, price cut. So it's a mix of all, uh, uh, Abhinesh. So thanks. Uh, my second question is on dairy. So in yeah. dairy, uh, you have mentioned captive consumption of SNP, SPN. So what does it translate in terms of, say, uh, any uh, savings in terms of cost? And second is uh, this new brand architecture has already been done in terms of the laughing cow. In terms of distribution, next one to two years, uh, what kind of scale up? Uh, could be there because now obviously uh, you will become more affordable to consumer gradually as your supply chain and uh, manufacturing uh, becomes uh, normalized. So if you could elaborate on both, both these aspects. So uh, so what, what it does is it helps us uh, fulfill uh, our commitments to the farmers. We are collecting uh, a lot of milk from our farmers. We are processing that and we are uh, what whatever uh, is required from the company's perspective we are fulfilling that at this point there is no cost advantage of doing that but there is no cost dis disadvantage either we are in the process of scaling up our factories uh, and yes once we scale them up fully uh, we will start to see cost advantages as well uh, on the cheese part of the business, yes, uh, we are really looking forward. The initial signs are looking very positive, Abhinesh, on cheese, and we are really looking forward to good growths. Uh, you know, we, we don't give forward-looking statements, so I won't give you a number on that, but all I can tell you is that we are very optimistic on what we can do with our cheese portfolio now. So one last very quick question. So on cake and rusk, uh, your commentary was uh, that not very strong, reasonably strong in terms of growth. Uh, and you have been doing innovation uh, very uh, uh, aggressively over the past many quarters. So what is the issue here? Is the overall market not living up to the initial expectations which you had? Or is there again a uh, pricing and the regional competition which is also there? So it's a mix of both. Uh, one is the market growths have been a little tepid, and second is that regional competitors, again, similarly what I told you about biscuits, uh, same phenomena is happening is here as well. And as, as I told you, there are uh, 2,500 regional competitors as far as Rusk is concerned. So the onus of uh, making sure that we protect ourselves and uh, grow our business and make sure that, uh, you know, we we uh, do what is right for the business uh, is on us. Uh, and we've uh, commissioned uh, rusk lines all over the place. We never had our own rusk line in the north. We've just commissioned it in UP. That will give us a major advantage as far as rusk is concerned uh, in UP and similarly in Ranjangao. And uh, so th th this is now we are taking uh, rusk capacity also in house, which will give us a big advantage, not just from a cost perspective, but also from a quality perspective. Abneesh, you've taken almost 30% uh, of the time with your fire yes. squad. Okay. I am done, sir. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. A request to all the participants, please restrict to two questions per participant, so the management can address all the questions from all the participants. Next question is from the line of Avi Mehta. From query group, please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Uh, sir, I just had two questions. First, would it be fair to say that 1Q reflects the entire impact of the rise in price based competition and hence we should retain our expectations of flattish EBITDA margin for the full year? Um, well, I would not say that it's not flattish. If you look at our trajectory for uh, many years, except for, you know, uh, so if you look at it, uh, if you look at 21, 22, we were at an average of about 14%, right, on operating profits. Uh, in Q1, we are at 15.6. So what you are really looking at is the COVID periods of uh, high numbers. So whether it's a 2021, and obviously last year we were taking uh, price increases to make sure that we uh, met our targets as, well, as far as inflation was concerned. 
So if you were to look at, if you were to draw a, a, a line, a progression line, I think we are moving in the right direction. I think that will continue. So I'm sorry. So should we say that the, I mean, at least for the near term, we are broadly done from a pricing or competition, price-based competition perspective, and that 17 and a half that or 17.4 that we did, broadly flattish number. We should see that's the right understanding, right? I just didn't. I wasn't yes, sure yes. if I got that correct. Okay. Yes. And the second bit, sir, is on the pricing growth. So I'm just revisiting our comments. You had said that we should expect about 2% growth is what you have built in or you would expect for the next year or this year. Uh, does that need to be revisited given the recent price cuts that have been done or no, it's broadly in line with what we were kind of assuming? What 2%? I'm not aware of this 2%. What are you talking about? So the FY24 pricing, you said volume growth will move up from what we saw FY23 and yeah. pricing will come off and you had, you know, at last uh, in 4Q oh, yeah, we yeah. were discussing that. Yeah, that yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, no, so that 2% will probably uh, not happen this year. It seems that uh, it will be a, a, a flattish year from a price standpoint. Uh, yeah. 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 So uh, it's not going to be a 2% increase, and uh, the reason for that is uh, the commodity prices. So, uh, and uh, we, you know, with that, I think we should be uh, in, a, in a in a good place to, uh, you know, make sure that we are able to grow. Yes, on the volume front, I think we will start to see the volumes come back. Uh, but you've got to remember that last year, second quarter, we'd grown 22% or something like that. Correct, so we had, yeah, we had a very big uh, second quarter, so, but I think post that, uh, volumes in any case will start to come back. So, I mean, okay, so volume growth should be high single digit. That kind of expectation could probably have an upside given the pricing growth probably kind of changes. That's how I should kind of read it. Yeah, and you know, in our category, the way to look at uh, volume growth is actually, the way I look at it is transaction growth. Because, see, if you've taken out uh, three grams from a biscuit, uh, the consumer is not going to go and buy one more packet of yours, right? So uh, that does impact overall volumes in terms of tonnages, but it doesn't impact the number of packets that we are selling. So our transaction growths have still been a very robust 9%. They are equal to our revenue growths, and which is what we look at. But having said that, I understand where you're coming from. I think even tonnages will start to grow as we move forward through the year. Okay, sir. And just a bookkeeping, sir. Is it possible to share the ICDs on book with the moon? And that's the last one on bias. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, ICD as of June 30th uh, stands at 760 crores between Bombay Dying and uh, Bombay Burma. Okay. Thanks all for my say. Thank you very much, sir, for answering these questions. Yeah. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Percy Pantaki from IFL Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, good morning. Uh, I was just looking at your uh, gap between the volume and uh, value growth. Uh, so this quarter, it's a 9% uh, uh, value growth and zero volume. So it's a gap of about 9%. If I look at it uh, in Q4, it is also about 9%. So uh, uh, it doesn't seem that uh, there has been a lot of uh, price cut or anything of that sort uh, in the last uh, three to four months. And yet, if I look at your EBITDA margins, even adjusted for the PLI one-off, I think it was uh, uh, close to 19% uh, in Q4, which has come down to uh, 17 and a half. So how do we explain this that uh, uh, without too much of uh, uh, pricing, the margins have still come off and the volumes are also uh, weak. So in this quarter, we've taken price reversals of about 1.8%. Uh, there were fiscal benefits, uh, which were one-time PLI accru accrual, uh, which was taken in Q4 last year, which was 2.4%. So, uh, so uh, price reversals are 1.8%. Fiscal benefits are uh, because they were taken in Q4 and not in Q1. So that's 2.4%. Uh, 
there's an employee cost increase uh, which is flattish and uh, there is a, a decrease in uh, other expenses which is led by advertising spends which is about 1.2 percent so versus uh, q4 uh, that we are we are negative by 3.3 percent so that is that is the uh, you know uh, that is the number that you're looking for i believe okay so uh, uh, how do we uh, how do we look at uh, margins for the rest of the year should we believe that uh, unless the commodity prices uh, change versus the current levels the margins that you have currently sort of uh, done is a good representative of uh, what should continue in the future or do you think that it could drop further because you might take further price cuts uh, uh i mean uh, how should i approach this i'm not looking for a number guidance but more of a, 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 a guidance on how to think about this no so the way to think about it the way i think about it is that uh the priority for us uh, we are uh, reasonably profitable i think we are our margins are very robust and healthy uh the trick is uh, growing our top line and uh, making sure that you know we get uh the 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 volumes and the shares uh, which are required and with that will come the margins okay so it is possible that uh, in the near term the margins might uh, go below what we have seen this quarter am i reading that right no you are not reading it right uh, i didn't say that at all okay okay understood so basically uh, uh, we should see a, a gradual recovery of uh uh volumes in tonnage and mm-hmm. at the same time uh, more or less uh, maintaining our uh, c- current margins over uh, an average of the next 3 4 quarters uh, is would that be a right interpretation yes yes okay okay understood secondly i just wanted to understand in terms of uh, uh, your main growth drivers of course innovation is one of them but the second has been uh, distribution expansion uh, uh, do you think that uh, that uh, driver can continue to contribute at the same rate over the next couple of years as it has contributed over the last 5 years given that as we expand more and more the opportunity to expand uh, uh, sort of reduces because it's a finite game at the end of it uh i i wouldn't say that uh, i do think see as i have told you in the past as well our uh, you know the 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 clear opportunities are in these uh, hindi states and certain other states as well and we are really digging in to make sure that we uh, you know neutralize those uh, deficiencies that we have in the system so i do think that we have a runway uh, to gain distribution gains but beyond that it's also about our uh, new categories i think our new categories have started to uh, perform much better so we've seen uh, croissants doing very well we've seen you know uh, drinks and you know our uh, uh, flavored uh, you know milkshakes etc doing very well even wafers uh, you know we are we are putting a solid strategy to make sure that we make that into a reasonable sized business as we go forward um so all that i think is going to start to contribute more to our business as well uh, obviously as i said that even cake and rusk uh, while right now they are not uh, you know overweight uh, but uh, as time goes by i'm sure that they will bring uh, their uh, weight also to the uh, you know to the other categories growth so i think and, and obviously uh, dairy uh, which i have spoken about already uh, cheese we've started to see green shoots of uh, very good growth uh, with the joint branding and the new products that are coming in so i think all that will also add to uh, what you're talking about thank you sorry yes. to interrupt you pause here i'll request to join the queue again participants please restrict to two questions per participant Next question is from the line of Sherish Pardeshi from Centrum Broking. Please go ahead. Hi, good morning, Varun. Uh, thanks for the mm-hmm. opportunity. Uh, two questions from my side. 
now we have already started commercial production under bell jv so i just wanted to little more understanding on the entire dairy business so we have our own products and now we have bell products which you have said that laughing cow has gone into the market so two questions here of, uh, what is the dairy sales contributed in this quarter and uh, in terms of distribution scale up what has happened uh, in terms of bell portfolio some more little more depth so we we have seen uh, double digit growth uh, well this quarter we were just starting up so there were some shortages as far as uh, cheese was concerned because uh, you know the bell product had had stopped coming into the market and uh, we were starting up to do uh, the joint branding so this quarter wasn't uh, a great quarter overall but in the third month we started to see uh, cheese uh, volumes and revenues uh, start to look very good and that that continues uh, as we speak uh, as well so uh, it's been it's been uh, i would say uh, this quarter has been a reasonable performance but it's very clearly showing uh, a path to the future to us okay yeah uh, so against last year 550 odd crore uh, we should be targeting double digit strong double digit growth that's what you're saying yes okay okay and uh, my my second question on uh, up and tamil nadu you mentioned that there are some incentives which we have got so what yeah. is the quantum which we have already booked in this quarter or maybe this year uh, expected to come and part two is that uh, what it means to and you said both the uh, location we have started five lines So could you explain what are these lines you have started? So on the uh, incentives, uh, UP we have still not got the eligibility certificate, so nothing therefore is recognized in the books. And TN, uh, we got we have got the eligibility certificate, and a very small amount has been booked in quarter one. So about seven eight crores have been booked in quarter one. So, sir, uh, for full year, what is the expectation for incentive? Uh, so we are in the process of uh, quantifying that. Yeah. Because some of these in TN, for instance, it is incremental sale that comes out of all the factories in TN. So it's not a straightforward uh, computation. So it will take us some time before we can quantify and see what are the products which are happening in this factory and. four other factories which are also there in the state etc so we'll make an assessment probably h1 end uh, we should be able to make an assessment okay and what are the lines so sorry to interrupt you may i request to join the queue again please thank you participants please restrict to two questions per participant next question is from the line of arnav mitra from goldman sachs please go ahead Yeah. Hi. Uh, my first question was again actually on margins. So, uh, so, so you mentioned you probably need to take some more price corrections. And our understanding is there is a bit of a sequential up move we are seeing in edible oils, sugar, and possibly even in wheat flour. So, in this environment, uh, do you not feel that there could be more uh, pressure in margins in the near term, or are there other ways you could offset uh, this uh, situation? no so see uh, edible oils uh, there there is no uptick edible oils actually are at the lowest uh, ebb ever in the last 3 uh, 4 years uh, sugar yes there has been a little bit of uh, inflation but i think the government is very clear that they want to control this so uh, i don't think there's going to be uh, much inflation as far as sugar is concerned uh flour is the one which we really have to watch because uh there is uh, the the production hasn't been as good this year uh and uh, while the inflation currently is uh is low single digits but we've got to watch that but at this point in time it seems we are covered for the next 3 uh, or 4 months so we just have to make sure that we uh, you know do this uh, carefully and obviously uh, you know we are doing things in a way that they are reversible at short notice so uh, we don't see a risk but if there is a risk that emerges uh, we will be able to make sure that we mitigate that very quickly okay thanks very very helpful for uh, the other thing i wanted to ask was on uh, 
uh, employee cost and depreciation, this seems in the standalone and console both, it seems to have stepped up YOI as well as sequentially. Is this largely due to new capacities and uh, do we see these going up further as more capacities uh, probably are in line for getting commissioned or ramping up? See, uh, you will see some, uh, you know, uh, increase there, but uh, there are obviously savings that we make in commitment uh, charges as well as conversion charges uh, from uh, CPs. So uh, it's a bit of a, uh, you know, left and right. Uh, Venkat, would you like to comment? Yeah, no, absolutely right. Hmm. Uh, so the increase in depreciation is on account of some of these units which have come up, Dairy, UP, Tamil Nadu, etc. Um, uh, uh, it's also uh, the increase in employee cost that you see is partially partially on account of that, plus on account of the increments that have happened in the current uh, financial year. Uh, so, so, like Varun said, what really happens is that while while some of these lines see an increase, there is a reduction that happens in the conversion costs, uh, which goes as part of the other expenses. So, so we we have been tracking that quite closely to ensure that overall uh, we stand to gain, and that's one of the reasons why we are putting up these factories closer to the markets. But having said that, one thing is clear that we have to start to uh, grow our top line uh, faster as we go through the year. Uh, we've got capacity, and you know that's that's uh, we, we we've uh, got in new lines. We've got in incentives. Now the onus is on us to make sure that uh, we uh, grow our volumes and our shares uh, in each one of these markets because that gives us better profitability. So I think we are poised very well on that. Yeah, thanks. That's from my side. All the best. Yeah. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Kunal Vora from BNP Paribas. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, my first question is on retirement spends. Uh, if I look at FY23, its number was up more than 50%, which is much higher compared to what the industry was doing. How are you looking at the number in FY24? Uh, with increased competition, would you look to raise it or with moderation in revenue growth, you would want to reduce it? Can you, can you repeat uh, the question, please? Yeah, I was looking at the FY23 annual report and I see that your advertisement spends are up like 62% year on year, which was like uh, unlike most of the SMCG companies. Oh, you're talking about last year? Like FY23, I was looking at FY23, but I'm now asking for thoughts on FY24. About no, so like, see, how do you... Yeah, so 23, see if you think about it, uh, in 22-23, we were cycling the 21-22 and in 21-22, because of COVID, and because of the inflation, uh, we had really uh, clamped up on our uh, spends. So we had just normalized our spends. It was not like we'd gone completely out of whack. We had normalized our spends after, uh, you know, the, those two or three years of COVID. And uh, that's why you're seeing the increase. I think we will remain within these parameters. It's not like we are looking at taking this completely, uh, uh, you know, uh, out of the charts. Uh, we will remain within those parameters as far as these spends are concerned. So, Varun, you were at 400 to 500 in the earlier years. It went to 675, which is a sizable jump. So, uh, would you remain closer to 675 or go back to the 500 levels which you had earlier? See, we are at about, uh, you know, uh, if you remove the sales uh, expenses, we are at about uh, four, three and a half to four percent of our revenue, right? So it will remain in that percentage, roughly. Sure. Okay. My yeah. second and last question is on innovation contribution. So you have about ten. You mentioned about ten percent, uh, which is like which seems higher compared to peers. So what is your definition of innovation, and how much of this will be new products? How much of this will be innovation of existing products? No, that 10% that I spoke about was dairy only. Uh, or our total innovation is about 4% currently. And uh, it will it will remain in that 4%. And I have uh, defined that for you. Uh, the definition is that products which have been launched in the last 24 months, after 24 months, they go out of the innovation bracket. Uh, and if new products are launched, they come into that. 
so uh, it will remain between 4 to 5% uh, of our total uh, revenues okay, understood uh, that's it for my case thank you yeah thank you next question is from the line of richard from jm financial please go ahead hi thanks for taking my question uh, varun hi uh, what are take your inputs on how you think the metrics pan out uh, you know here onwards as we go into q3 and q4 uh the genesis of this question is that uh pricing growth anniversizes completely sometime in q2 uh and moreover the price cuts that you've taken or will take further will add on to uh, you know to the price decline that 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 could come by by then so unless volumes pick up substantially uh my guess is that top line growth could look like you know zero with whatever volume growth being there uh, getting offset by the negative pricing uh this is on top line and on profits Uh, your H2 last year gross margin as well as EBITDA margins were already uh, you know pretty rich at 18 to 19 percent. Uh, even if I were to strip out uh, you know the bunched up PLI from the equation, uh, grateful if you can comment on this. Uh, you know if there's something uh, I'm missing or if you if you would like to throw some light on what ways are there to prop up value growth and margin uh, as the quarters progress. No, you're right. See uh, the the pricing we had we in fact we had. Uh, kept taking price increases even till uh, the end of uh, Q4, right? And there were some price increases which were even taken in Q1, right? So uh, while there were price increases, there were also uh, rationalisation on certain uh, SKUs. So we worked at both ends. And uh, you're right about see last year's uh, price increases continued till the end of the, uh, the year. but uh, the max uh, max number of price increases that we took was till q3 right so uh, yes uh, next uh, you know we we were cycling pretty high uh, base as far as uh, these quarters are concerned so we will have to make sure that we work doubly hard to get our top lines to grow Second, uh, Varun also wanted your view on uh, on on this line called other expenses, right? I mean, this is a line that used to grow in in single digit uh, some years back, and used to be the the key source of margin expansion for a long period of time. Uh, you know, the rate of growth in this line has been much higher than usual in the last five quarters. Um, if you can just throw some light on the reasons for such a sharp increase in these overheads suddenly in the recent past, uh, despite your despite your extremely, uh, I would say, high level of focus on costs. usually so uh, if you were to compare other expenses from let's say last year to now uh, the single largest contributor in the increase has been uh, advertisements okay uh, advertisements are not counting uh, promotions and trade spends okay and that has grown from 3.5% of uh, top line to 4.2 in the current year so that's that's something that so what has been happening uh, richard is uh, over the last 3 years or so 2021 onwards we have been spending uh, ansp we have been coming back to normalcy we have been uh, pulling it down so 2021 was a, was a very low spend 21 22 when the when the second wave of uh, covid happened again we pulled it back a little bit so we have been sometimes spending uh, our normal normative levels and sometimes not spending at all therefore you tend to see that growth it's essentially driven by nsp uh, spends okay and this this is now going back richard to our normative uh, levels as i said it will remain in that ballpark of 4 4.2% 4. and uh, um you know uh, you'll see uh, growths and you'll see so uh, now i think things are much better covid's out of the way and we are back to normal life so it will stay at about that got it uh, thanks thanks for wish you all the best yeah thanks thank you next question is from the line of latika chopra from jp morgan please go ahead hi uh, thanks for the opportunity my question was on the uh, market growth you know you mentioned that the market growth has been affected and uh, your market shares were flattish if you could uh, you know elaborate a little better on uh, you know any specific uh, product segments under biscuits uh, you know which are she seeing lot more slower growth or lot more competition 
or any specific geographies you may want to call out and i also heard you said that this could be a temporary phase uh, so based on your past experiences you know with local competition coming back uh, you know uh, what kind of time frame do you envisage you know before you know uh, uh, the national players uh, you know start coming back uh, on the market share front thank you so uh, so radhika it's also a little bit of a vicious cycle so what happens is that uh in uh, every product life cycle you see phases when uh the growth or the you know what i have heard uh, even uh, restauranters saying that uh, this quarter has been uh, you know one of the largest uh, restaurant companies told me that this has been the slowest quarter in fact they are running negative uh, double digit negative uh, in in this quarter and uh, the reason for the same uh, given to me was that you know last year there was revenge eating happening and uh, people are uh, normalizing uh, you know they're going out etc uh, i don't think you know it's it's such a, a severe impact but yes there is there seems to be a cycle and uh, what happens during these times when there is when you know everyone in the category is hitting a wall what happens is people tend to be desperate right and in their desperation uh, the local players especially uh, they tend to then you know be a, a little uh, irrational in what they do so you got to just ride out these phases and make sure that your uh, strategic agenda doesn't change and you do not become tactical uh, and you uh, also start to do what Uh, the local players are doing so we are doing exactly that yeah uh, we are trying to make sure that our strategic agenda remains our main agenda yes we will do what is necessary to make sure that we do not lose space to them in the short term and then we will come back uh, with a bang once things have normalized uh, the slowness that we've seen uh, is uh, basically in the traditional trade markets more so in rural and while our agenda on rural has been uh, fairly robust and we've been growing our distribution but we still have seen uh, some amount of slowdown there and uh, we are hoping that uh, you know that's a temporary phenomena and uh, things will come back and i don't think it's restricted to only our industry i think it's a Uh, overall uh, situation which uh, uh, nobody has been able to point a finger at what really is driving it uh, but my own hypothesis is that uh, it will it will slowly and steadily uh, come back uh, we just have to make sure that we drive our own agenda so sure, uh, and my second question was on capex plans for fy24 We saw a significant step up in FY23, so just wanted to know what you are thinking about FY24, and if uh, there is any clarity on FY25, uh, KPEX plans also, if you could share. Thank you. So uh, it's going to be a continuation of what we are doing. Uh, so we've got uh, the factories which are already in uh, process. So there's a, a little bit of investment coming up in Ranjangao, which is uh, dairy related. uh we've got a factory coming up in bihar because uh, bihar we've been running out of capacity and uh, that's coming up and we it's coming up with uh, incentives we've got a little bit of expansion in orissa so that's about it uh, we will continue with these projects and uh, we are not looking at any more capacity expansion till we are able to scale up uh, you know our our volumes and our revenues uh in the coming quarters any number you want to put for fy24 kpex yeah it's going to be about 400 450 crores all right thank you so much yeah thank you very much ladies and gentlemen we'll take that as the last question and i'll hand the conference to mr mayank mundra for closing comments thanks everyone for spending time with us on this call today we look forward to interacting with you again Thank you very much. On behalf of Britannia Industries Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us. You may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.